And we are going to read starting in verse 19 through uh, verse 31, through the end of the chapter. So this morning I want you to just follow along with me. We're going to look at a uh, famous man by the name of Doubting Thomas. And Doubting Thomas was a man who uh, a lot of people in our, in our society don't know any longer. You ask most uh, people out on the streets who Doubting Thomas is, they go, who's Doubting Thomas? I, I am saying Doubting Thomas too. And so we, we need to understand what he says about doubt in our lives and about how we are uh, living our lives uh, in the confidence of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Look with me starting in, in verse 19 of chapter 20 of the book of John. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors uh, being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed, the, showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold the forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciple told him, that we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then Thomas said, Then he said to Thomas, now Put your finger here and see my hands, and put your hand and place it into my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Do you pray with me? Most gracious Heavenly Father, we believe today is a day of celebration of your resurrection, as every Lord's Day is. But Father, we, we take time to remember not only your death upon the cross for sinners, but also your resurrection that proved and guaranteed the righteous standing of all those who would ever believe. Father, I pray that as we've come to your table and last week and as we come before you this week, that we extol you and worship you and lift up your name. For Father, you are our God, you are our King, you are our Lord, you are our Savior, you are our Redeemer, you are our friend, you are our confidant, and you're the one that upholds all things by the word of your power. Help us to see this today, Lord. Help us to know you, not as the one who is powerless, but the one with all power and authority has risen again from the dead. I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. In our hymnals, there is a song which we are going to be singing at the conclusion of our service called Christ the Lord is Risen Today. And the first verse goes like this. Christ the Lord is risen today. Sons of men and angels say, Raise your joys and triumphs high. Sing ye heaven and earth reply. So one of the reasons we gather together today on a Sunday is to remember that Jesus Christ, our Lord, 
is not in a tomb somewhere on this earth. That he is actually bodily risen from the dead. And that he reigns today with Christ and will someday come down to judge the living and the dead. Christ has been given all power by the Father. And I want to let you know that growing up, I went to church. I was drugged to church every week and, and I went to Sunday school and I did all the things that good little boy would do. Well, occasionally. Um, there were times when um, my mom and dad would drop me off and I wouldn't go to Sunday school but would walk the aisles and the halls of the church. Because I didn't want to go to Sunday school, I didn't want to go to church, and so I would keep walking the aisles and would, would be hiding out until my dad found me one day. Well, when my dad found me, that put the end to that. But see, I thought that Christianity was fine for other people. It was fine for people who were weaker, who wanted to hear that they were okay, that needed a crutch in life, but I didn't need a crutch when I was growing up. Little did I know how weak I had become. Little, little did I know that uh, I, I was weaker than I thought. You know, if someone says that what youth, youth is wasted on the young, um, many times when we are youth, we think we're indestructible. We have all the strength and power, and especially if we have good parents that take care of us, we think we're doing really well. But when I, came, when I became a Christian, I had doubts. I had doubts about a lot of things that were in the Bible, and I, I was trying to wrestle with these issues in the Bible, whether the Bible was really historically accurate. Did it really say that Christ, the Lord, had died and risen again. That was an important thing in my uh, newly found faith in college. I came to the conclusion at one point in my life that to doubt was sinful. But it was not until several years ago that I experienced a doubt for a prolonged period of time and struggled with some things in my personal life that I realized that doubt, doubt is not necessarily sinful. But many believers have doubts at different times in their life. Even, you know, depression happens with people. Larry has preached through the Psalms recently and, and shared a little bit about how even the psalmist had doubts. And so if you're doubting this morning about the reliability or the, the historical witness of Thomas, let me, let me encourage you this morning that doubt can be solved. Saving faith solves our doubts. And so what I want you to encourage this morning is let's define what saving faith is. Define what it's not. And this morning I want you to place your faith in the one who is greater than all kings. That is the Lord Jesus Christ who is reigning today in heaven. Amen. See, Jesus Christ is the object of our faith. God is the object of our faith. See, faith is not something you churn up by your willpower. Faith is not something you, you get more of and more of because you're smarter and no more stuff. That's right. Faith grows because the object of your faith is large. Faith grows because the confidence in the one that you believe in is sure. Faith increases because the power of the one that you believe in is great. Amen. See, if you place your faith in a little bitty snail, <laughs> your faith is not going to be very great. If you place your faith in money, money will disappoint you. If you place your faith in friends, your friends can disappoint you, can't they? Yes. In fact, they will. God has many causes. D.A. Carson lists some reasons that we all doubt. Some doubt because of simple ignorance. You know, the old adage, if the tree falls in the forest and no one there is here, there to listen or see it, did it really fall? And of course the answer is yes. Of course it did. But sometimes people don't know the facts of the crucifixion. They're, they're, they're just doubting. They're doubting because they hear things and they hear rumors about things, but they don't know the facts or the complete understanding of what it means to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and that the fact of the resurrection was real. 
I remember coming to faith in Christ and I remember one of the things that was very important to me was the fact of the resurrection. It was a new thing to me. Even though I had grown up in the church, I was ignorant about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I thought that it was a nice story, a good idea, but, but really now, for someone to die and come back again, i would never seen that before. But the claims of Christians kept bothering me. I had gone to church, I had heard sermons, I had understood things, but, but I was 21 years old. I was in my senior year at Texas A&M, and I remember struggling with the issue about Christianity because I wanted to either believe Christianity, because that's the religion, quote, that my mom and dad brought me up in, or I wanted to find a religion or develop one that suited me perfectly. 